Hi, I'm Andrew with JVR Industries. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove, clean, and reinstall the inlet filter on a VSV 100 vacuum pump. This pump is commonly found in a JVR VAC 610, uh, but you might be using it for a different application. So in this video, we're gonna show it to you on a bench, ready to go, but this process could just as easily be done inside the machine. So first, if you have this in a machine and hooked up to a vacuum hose, you're gonna to wanna to remove that vacuum hose. It'll make it much easier to do this process. Once the vacuum hose is removed from the inlet, we're gonna to need to remove this shroud, this white shroud right here. First thing, it's gonna have an eye hook on it, so just unthread that. If you can't do it by hand, then you can put a screwdriver in there to crack it loose. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove this cap. Now this cap is just held on by pressure, so you're just gonna to wanna to get a firm grip on it wiggle it back and forth and pull it right off. Set that aside. Next, we're gonna take the shroud off, which consists of eight Phillips head screws. You got four on the left side, four on the right. Um, getting a drill will make your life a lot easier. So with all the screws removed, then you'll be able to remove the cover here. Now in this case, I have a 90 degree barb fitting on this pump. You'll probably, if you have this type of fitting, you'll have a difficult time getting this to clear. Uh, you have a few options. You can file the metal down a little bit so it'll clear because it just barely does not clear. Uh, the other option would be to remove the fitting and then reapply it with new sealant once you're done. So in this case, I'm just gonna crack it loose and turn it in this direction. It'll allow me to get it off, lift it up and tilt it. And I'm removing the cover. Now with the cover removed, you're gonna to need to grab a six millimeter Allen wrench or hex wrench. Um, in this case, I'm using an impact gun, but you could just use a manual wrench. And we're removing these four bolts. Now with the four bolts removed, the only thing that's holding this on is probably gonna be a little bit of suction or you might just have to give it a little bit of a tap there might be a, a little bit of sealant in between these two or a gasket so give it a little tap nice and gentle gentle lift that off what you want to be cautious of is on the bottom you have an o-ring you want to make sure that doesn't fall out or get um, uh, lost in the process you'll also have what this is called is an anti-suck back valve so i'll show you how this works real quick uh, you lift that out there's going to be a spring inside there you want to make sure if this does potentially come apart into two pieces. You wanna make sure you find that spring and set it back in there, cause that's gotta float like that. That sits down into a groove here. That's where that's gonna go back. The O-ring can go back into this groove on the top. So I'm gonna peel that off. We'll put that right back in here. So with this removed, what we're servicing in this video is going to be the screen filter that's inside here. So you'll see there is a snap ring. It's an inside snap ring that's holding it in there. Ideally, you're gonna want an inside snap ring player set that you're gonna apply to the holes in the snap ring. Squeeze it together. And lift out like that. If you do not have a pair of snap ring players, uh, what you could do is take a pair of needle nose players and grind down the tips on it so it'll fit into those holes. It will require a little bit more finagling, but you will get it out and uh, be able to reinstall it with using um, a modified pair of needle nose. So with that out, then this screen will just pop right out of there. Then you can clean this off, use air, wash it, get it nice and clean and dry. And then you're gonna basically just reassemble in the reverse order of the disassembly. So we're gonna put that back in. Grab our pair of snap ring pliers with the snap ring. Squeeze it together while we push down. Now what you want to do is make sure that it snaps into the groove. So you want to hear it clicking in. So I'm going to push down around the perimeter and there you go. You heard that snap. That means it's in the groove and we're good to go. Then it's just a matter of reinstalling back onto the pump. Using those four screws, we want to reinstall them. I'll use my impact just to get them snug and then I'll go over with a wrench and manually tighten them to make sure I don't over tighten. Okay, we'll tighten down the four bolts. Here 
Reinstall the cover, just the back, get it on there. Now in this case, we would definitely want to remove this all the way, apply new sealant to the threads and reinstall it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put it back in its original position. Then we're going to want to put, we can put this cover back on. Now this cover also has a metal plate, which oftentimes will stay on there when you go to remove it. If it does fall out, it literally just sits right on top. Ooh, sits right on top like that. And then this, you're just going to push on and you can reinstall it to the original position that the arrow was pointed to. So when you remove it, you can make note of where that arrow was pointed. Grab your Phillips screws and install them back into the pump. And lastly, we're just going to reinstall the eye hook. This is purpose of this is if you need to lift up the pump, but you might as well reinstall it just in case you need it down the road. And with that eye hook reinstalled, uh, you can put this either back in your machine, put the hose back on, tighten down your clamps, and you're good to go. So thanks for checking out our video. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any comments, please leave them in the details below. And thanks for checking it out.